Good morning, Dr. Brian Hulsebos, chiropractor, coming at you live here from Hulsebos for Hartford Chiropractic. And today we do another edition of Ask the Chiropractor. So I am a uh, Rockford, Illinois chiropractor. I graduated from Palmer College of Chiropractic. I have a couple of postgraduate degrees in different sub subjects of chiropractic. And every week we do this question of Ask the Chiropractor. Do you have a question for the chiropractor? So people email us questions, people text us questions, and people go online here and submit us questions. So the question I was asked this week is, how do I know when I should ice something or heat something? When do you put ice on it? When do you put heat on it? This is a question we get asked a lot. And actually, it can go wrong really quickly if you don't know what you're doing. So let me try to give you some basic guidelines. Again, these are just guidelines. These are not um, take it to the bank stuff. Because everything's a little bit different. So the real, if you really want to know the real answer, you have to actually talk to your chiropractor to get the exact answer for your situation. But let me kind of give you some guidelines of when you put ice on something and when you put heat on something. So what I like to talk to people a lot about is basketball games. When you watch a basketball game, you'll see the athletes run up and down the court, up and down, up and down. Now, when they're done running, what you notice is that the first thing they do is they sit down and they put ice on themselves right away. They ice their knees, they ice their ankles, they ice everything. Because they know by running up and down the court, what they just got done doing is going to cause them to swell up and have problems. So by putting the ice on it, as soon as they stop moving, they stop it from starting, if that makes sense. So if you know something that you're going to do is going to cause inflammation, cause swelling, as soon as you stop doing it, you put ice on it right away. This way it never gets there. So a lot of times I talk about the simple rule of icing when you stop, ice when you stop moving. So if you're somebody that always has lower back problems and you go outside and you shovel the snow or you go outside, you rake the yard, you go outside or you lift a bunch of heavy boxes or stuff, stuff like that. Or you, let's say you go on a long car ride. Let's say you're traveling for the holidays. When as soon as you get done, what your location is, the moment you stop, you put the ice on it. And this way it doesn't swell up and give you problems. Now, what if I sit down and wait 20 minutes and put the ice on? Is that as effective? No, it's not. Because the moment you stop moving, that's when the inflammation kicks in. Remember, inflammation uh, makes tissue sticky. And sticky tissues make knots, and knots create more irritation. So if you can stop it before it starts, and you're doing great. Now, if you forgot to put ice on it, 20 minutes goes by. Should you just say, you know what, I'm just not going to bother putting ice on it because I've already forgotten? Absolutely not. You should still go ahead and do it. Just it's not going to be as good as if you've done it right away. So there you go. Ice when you stop. Now, let's talk about heat. When do you use heat? Well, if those muscles get inflamed and they, and they make knots, moist heat will go in there and they take those knots and they break those up and separate them. Now, notice I said moist heat, not, not a heating pad. So you want to take moist heat. That's why when you wake up in the morning and you're stiff and sore because you don't move a lot when you sleep, what you want to do is you want to get the hot water hit you. You want to have that hot water hit you and have it break up those knots. So that way you can loosen up and feel good. That's why the hot shower in the morning feels so good. So if I said before, ice when you stop, you want to use moist heat to go. So moist heat gets you going, gets you running, gets you prepared. So um, a lot of different ways that are selling moist heat. There's a lot of products out there that advertise your moist heat. But if you're not damp after you use it, then it's not moist heat. It's just that simple. So if you're not damp after you use it, then it's not moist heat. So make sure you use lots of moist heat to kind of loosen yourself, get going. Showers are great moist heat, okay? So we have ice when you stop. Moist heat when you get want to get going. Um, is there a thing as alternating it? Yeah, you know, when you're when you first get hurt and, and it's really acute and it's really small, a lot of people will do that. These are again, this is not so much for injury, this is more for chronic problems. So I'm just trying to give you some guidelines. Uh, when you have an acute injury, you need to go see somebody, talk to somebody, get specific directions. I'm just talking about those people that are chronic. Uh, a lot of people are surprised. You know, I take care of the ice hogs over here, the hockey team. A lot of people are surprised that this is kind of what they do during the game. So I get to the hockey game early. I get them all adjusted, and they walk around with the moist, hot, wet packs on them to keep themselves nice and loose, and they go play. Now, during intermission, this is kind of a tricky time because during intermission, they got 20 minutes off. It's kind of crazy hockey. They take 20 minutes off. But these guys will actually kind of put the hot packs back on themselves and keep themselves loose because they know they have to go again here soon. For them, it's not so much about stopping at that point. It's about getting ready to restart. So they will keep moist heat on during the intermissions. And then when the game's over, um, you know, they do a lot of stuff with the season ticket holders and the fans. And a lot of times you just kind of see the guys regret it. They don't regret seeing their fans. You know, I always tease who doesn't want to see people who idolize you and worship you. Of course they want to see their fans. 
what they don't want to do is um, they, they, they want to spend a lot of time rehabbing, getting things done. So let's talk about a cool down situation. So these guys get done with hockey and they've been running around like crazy. Just like if you were done working outside your yard and you were done um, exercising with yourself, you should always do a cool down. What a cool down for the hockey players is simply the first thing they'll do is they flush their legs. Now, what does that look like? Well, they get these really fancy apparatuses that go around their legs and squeeze them, kind of like somebody would have in the hospital trying to avoid blood clots when they squeeze their legs and do stuff like that. But you're not going to have that available to you. So if you have leg stiffness and, and hip soreness and stuff, you want to flush your legs. So what you do is you lay on your back and put your legs up the wall. So now your back's against the wall, your rear end's kind of in the corner, and your legs are going up the wall. Then you just want to pump your feet up and down, just kind of rock them up and down, bend your toes, bring them up and back and forth for about five minutes. And that'll really flush your legs out, get all this lactic acid out, stop those muscle cramps and aches later. Then, like you know, if you always have a chronic lower back pain, that would be a good time to kind of wrap yourself with ice, put the lower put the ice on your lower back. Now, with knees and shoulders, I like to kind of compress the ice in there. So for shoulders, I always tell people to put on a shirt that's too small and put the ice between you and the shirt. That way the ice can really get into the shoulder very good. And then like for your knees, you kind of want to wrap those two. Rest of the ice and the knee is good, but if you could wrap it like with an ace bandage or something, I've even seen like that. The players is like a plastic thing. So if you were at home and you were desperate, you could actually use saran wrap and just kind of wrap your knees with that and get it on there nice and tight. Uh, so you, you kind of do wrap yourselves up in those joints and kind of stop those the joints from getting achy and sore later on. And again, you want to do this as soon as you can. The longer you wait, the more likely it's going to swell up and give you problems. Now, how long do you keep the ice on? We keep the ice on for 20 minutes and take it off for an hour. You want you don't want to get frostbite from this. So you put the ice on for 20 minutes, take it off for an hour, put it back on again. You can repeat this as much as you want. Now, if you want to ice your lower back, usually what I recommend doing is getting a nice big ice pack. You know, the bigger the ice pack, the less better your aim has to be, right? So if you get a great big ice pack, put that ice pack down on the ground, lay on top of that ice pack, and then put your legs up. Um, I like to lay on something firm, a uh, bed, something that's too soft. The ice, you know, there's more to the bed than into you. So lay on something firm. Some of the things I like to lay on are, um, let's say, a couch with no cushions on it, or maybe lay on a floor. And then what you want to do is you want to get your knees bent. So you're laying on your back, your knees are bent. And you want to try to get your knees underneath something like a coffee table or a box or something and lay like that with the ice pack underneath you. That's a great way to, if you always have lower back issues, that's a great way to finish after your project and after your chores is to lay down like that. 20 minutes with the ice, hour off. Now you can lay like that as long as you want, but the ice should be coming and going 20 minutes on, hour off the whole time. Because you don't just want to lay there with ice on it for the whole time. You want to take the ice, come and go, come and go. The beautiful part about most ice packs is they're only good for about 20 minutes. They take about an hour to refreeze. So it's kind of hard to screw up, right? So you just want to get yourself a good ice pack and lay on that for 20 minutes. Uh, again, now let's say you do all that and now you, you fall asleep, you get up the next morning. This is a great time now to take a hot shower, use a warm compress or something. How long do you take a hot shower for? How long do you use a warm compress for? Well, the warm compress is kind of easy. You put it out when it's nice and warm, you take it off when it's not. So that's kind of how you do the warm compress. Uh, the hot shower, you know, just kind of stand there and loosen up until you feel better. If you have one of those little massage guns, those little thumper guns, I see they're really popular right now. After you take a hot shower and you dry off, that's a great way to kind of put that on a, a knotty shoulder or legs and stuff like that right after the shower. Uh, things are nice and loose in that hot water. So I'm a big fan of those little massage guns because too many of us spend too much time sitting now with our shoulders rolled forward. We get those knots between our shoulders. And we just, you know, I always talked about a tennis ball against the wall if you can't get one of those massage guns. Uh, but you want to work those muscles all the time and keep breaking up those knots. So getting the warm compress before that would be helpful and you can ice it afterwards. All right, let's say you didn't follow those instructions. And let's say that you went to bed and you rolled over the middle of the night and you realize you got a hot lower back. Oh, well, that's not right. Or maybe a neck or shoulder. What do you do then? Okay, you roll over two o'clock in the morning and you're like, oh, my back's killing me. Well, what I usually recommend what you do at that point is that you get up in the morning and you, or excuse me, get up right then and you get the hot water going. You put that warm compress on to calm those angry screaming muscles because those have to be calmed down. So you put the moist heat on there and let it go down your neck or your back, wherever the spot in your spine is. Then when you're done with that, what you want to do is you want to dry, dry off, <laughs> get dressed. I have to say that's something you didn't do it once. 
dry off, get dressed, and then you want to get in those icing positions. You want to either put that ice around your neck and shoulders. Again, for the shoulder area, I like putting on a shirt that's too small, sliding the ice between you and the shirt. And then for the lower back, like I described, you want to lay on your back on something firm, get your knees up there, put the ice on there. And hopefully that'll calm it down. Then at 7 30 in the morning, you want to call your chiropractor and get in and see what the heck happened. So that's kind of how we handle those things. So there's a lot of information about icing and heating. Um, I hope those answered your questions. Um, try to come out here every week with some questions that you might have. Uh, so if you have a question, even if you don't before, I know I've covered this topic before, but I'll be going in much more depth this time. But if you have a question about for the chiropractor, go ahead and ask. Uh, those of you who know me and know one of my biggest pet peeves, so whenever you see something about chiropractic, they tell you to go ahead and ask your family doctor about it. Your family doctor don't, that doesn't study chiropractic, doesn't know diddly squat about chiropractic. So I recommend that you ask the chiropractor. So if you have a question about chiropractor or chiropractic care or for the chiropractor, go ahead and leave a message below. Shoot us an email. Uh, go to our website. You see it in the bottom here, rockforddc.com. If you listen to the podcast, there's links to our website right there. Go ahead and hit contact us and let us a, a, a question. If you don't know, yes, we do have a podcast. You can go download our podcast and listen to us while you drive um, in case you missed the voice of your chiropractor during, <laughs> when you're not here. Um, other than that, I uh, hope everybody stays healthy, stay safe. Again, if you have a question, ask the chiropractor. Until next time, we'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>